into Morpheus Chair, the program where you learn to build robots with your bare hands. In this video, what I'm going to do is something special. I'm going to answer a question triggered by a question that one of the users of RoshDS uh, sent us. So, a user of RoshDS uh, created a Rosh deck that was basically trying to follow our tutorial on how to create a fish robot, the narrow robot created by ETH. So how to create it with SolidWorks in Gazebo. So that made me think, what if we could build a robot that goes, that can go in the water and move around the water what would we need in a simulation? So one of the first things that we need in a simulation is simulate buoyancy. That's already done. There's a plugin for that, for Gazebo. You put it and you generate buoyancy. But how do we simulate the system that fish use, that submarines use, and also blimps or anything that moves in a fluid, which is changing the air and density that they have inside to go up, down, or have neutral buoyancy. And that's what we're going to learn today, how to create a plugin for Gazebo to simulate that. So this changes a mass. How can we simulate it so that, remember that, we have to create a good robot, a good real robot. I always recommend that we need to generate a good simulation that allows us to iterate and test everything so that we don't spend loads of money and time on a real robot. This plugin will allow us to simulate all that and more. Basically, any change in mass, we can simulate that. So. Want to learn how? To the workbench! So here we are. So the first thing that we have to do is launch the Rosh Deck uh, called Buoyancy Update. I'll link the Rosh Deck uh, in the video description. You just have to open it while it opens. Show you that all the code that we generate will be in Buoyancy Test Package. You can download it in your local computer or create a Rosh deck, uh, from scratch and download this code as you wish. Um, this, this video is highly inspired in this question made by Lumaro um, who asked uh, how to change dynamically properties of a model in Gazebo and one of them is the mass and he solves it basically using Antic Mass. So, a um, big shout out to Lumaro for this solution and that inspired me to create this this plugin for uh, for this robot and to be able to control buoyancy so we have the project already launched very fast so the first thing that I'm going to show you is the code so we're going to go to the IDE. I'd like to open it here in a different tab. Okay, so as you can see, we have two packages, Spawn Robot Tools, that in ROS Development Studio, you don't need to put it here because it's already installed in the system. If you have it locally, you'll need Spawn Robot Tools, among others, okay? so. We're going to look for look at this package, buoyancy tests, and we have loads of files here, but what we are going to concentrate on is this main sphere buoyancy control launch. So we have other examples from other tutorials. I'll leave the link in the video description of all the tutorials linked to this. But essentially what we are doing is launching uh, a world the main, it's only launching this ocean world, that this world, if you go to ocean world, 
is essentially just uh, some ground planes and ceiling planes uh, with some colors. It's basically to have the appearance that we are underwater. Yeah, but there, there are, as you can see, there's no physical um, plugin or anything that allows us to float. Okay, that you have to bear in mind. And here comes the magic. So the spawn simple sphere buoyancy control. So let's have a look at this uh, launch. In this launch, again, simple launching, and we are spawning this URDF, which we are going to have a look right now. So what it's what is this? This is basically a sphere. It's a link that is a sphere that has some inertia, some mass of around 7.238, blah, blah, blah. You'll see why this uh, mass is this exact number. Um, but basically, we have a link, we have some properties, that's basically frictions and the color. And then we have these two plugins. This one is the buoyancy plugin is a default gazebo plugin that what defines is the density of the fluid and what it means this is essentially what it does is okay it says that the fluid that is around us is 1000 kilograms per um, cubic meter this is water basically um, and what it does is then all the links that we have around here, it will calculate the volume and based on the volume and the mass, it will calculate the, the buoyancy forces. So to know if it floats or sinks or stays where it is. So we have here some uh, script that we won't go over, but basically this one allows us to calculate the mass or the volume that well basically it allows us both things but one thing is to calculate to know the mass based on the volume so that we can put here ex the exact number so that the buoyancy is neutral so it's zero this means that if we launch the simulation let's have a look Okay, so we have basically some sea and a ground and we have this green ball. So if we hit play, it stays where it is. There's gravity. This is really important. There's gravity in this environment, but it stays where it is. Why? Because its mass has been calculated so that based on this mass and the volume of the sphere which is a sphere of radius 0 0.12 meters based on that the buoyancy in water is neutral and now the center of this video which is how do we change this how do we make it go up and how do we make it go down well we are using this plugin that we've generated based on the code that i told you uh, and let's have a look on how this works so essentially is 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 a model plugin which means that you put it in a model it's so in this robot model you have to put it here in, in between gazebo and uh, what it does is we're going not in all the details but I'm going to talk about the basic stuff which is first of all first of all let me just refresh this uh, okay there we are I had an old version I don't know why so here in this plugin what we see is that there's a name link to change mass. This means that in this plugin, 
you give it the length that we want to vary at the mouse, which makes sense because in a submarine, for, exa for example, there's only one zone that changes of mass, which is normally the, um, the place where we uh, fill it with water or we fill it with air, compressed air. So this is the same thing. But in this case, because we only have one link, it's obvious what link we are going to use. Okay, but this is meant for other bigger projects. Okay, so what we do is we get this link and then we, so the name of this link, and then we get from the model, we get the link object. Once this is done, then we do some initialization for ROS for having a topic. And this is really important. We are going to initialize a topic which is called model mass and this is a topic that this plugin will be reading so that we can change the mass any time we want. Okay, so each time that we change the mass, we will call this on ROS message, which it's defined here, and this will set the mass that we give it through the topic. And here is where all the magic happens, really is we get the we set the mass that that we want and then we update the mass once this is done the mass is changed and by changing the mass we are basically changing its density because we have the same volume the sphere is exactly the same but the mass is different yeah it would be the same as filling this sphere with water with um, with lead or with air. So and with different um, materials, it would have different buoyancies. Yeah, okay. So let's see how it works. So we're going to open a shell. Go whip. And put it like that. And so now we do ROS topic list, ROS topic publish. We're going to publish in this model mass, double tab. Okay. One thing that you can't do is put zero. If you put zero, Gazebo will crash because you can't have zero mass elements. This is a bug that I have to fix basically. Okay, so let's put a mass that is slightly different from this one. Let's put, um, I don't know, instead of this, we'll do it a bit lighter, like 0. Point, like 7.0. There we go, so it floats. Okay, let's change it to Eight. If we change it to eight, it starts to fall until it hits the ground. Yeah. And let's put it again to a value that that is buoyant, like zero buoyancy. Let's put it a slightly very slightly, like 7.1, there we go, so now it goes up really really slow, but because there's no friction, it's much easier, but there you go, so you can use this to do floating objects, to do anything that changes of mass dynamically uh, yeah and that's it and that's all for today thanks a lot for the support give us a like if you like the video and consider subscribing remember that in very little time we will have and celebrate the second ROS developers conference in the next video what we will try to do is 
give this simulated robot a kind of, si of locomotion. We will try different systems in simulation and see which one works better. So if you have any suggestions on what to add, what type of locomotion you would like to see in this kind of robot, please leave it in the comments below. And also tell us if you would like to see this robot made in reality. So until then, keep building.